Hey everybody, welcome to Practical Alchemy. Today's episode is going to be a beginner's guide to designing parts that fit together inside of Fusion 360. And to illustrate that, I'm gonna be showing you how to make a box with a removable lid. Now this video is very much a spiritual successor to my introductory guide to geometric fit and tolerancing. If you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you do so. Link is here. Here. And just in case you haven't watched in a while or you need a quick refresher, here it is. In the first part of that video, I explain that when you design two parts that fit together perfectly, they will not fit together when you go to print them out on your 3D printer or manufacture them in other ways because every manufacturing method is going to have some level of deviation from that true dimension that is going to cause those parts to actually interfere with each other, which you will need to compensate for in your part design. In the second part of the video, I introduce the concept of fit and break down the three main types interference fit, transition fit, and clearance fit. In interference fit, you are designing your parts so that they intentionally overlap, thereby requiring some type of mechanical force to push them together. In a transition fit, you introduce just enough deviation between the part walls to compensate for the deviation caused by the tolerancing, thus allowing you to fit the parts together without any type of mechanical intervention. And in a clearance fit, you create a deviation large enough that the parts can easily slide into each other. Then in the third part of the video, I show you how to create a simple gauge to determine the geometric values for each of those fit types for your specific circumstances, such as your 3D printer. Because having a solid understanding of the interference, transition, and clearance dimensions for your manufacturing method are going to be key to creating parts that actually fit together the way that you intend them to. All right, so. With all of that in mind, let's jump back to our cube. For this example, I'm gonna be designing my cube to be printed on my MakerBot 2. And I know, based off of the print settings that I like to run, that the clearance fit is 0.5 millimeters, the transition fit is 0.4 millimeters, and the interference fit is 0.3 millimeters. All right, so the absolute number one most important thing to designing parts with fit in mind is to start off by going up here to the Modify tab and putting those fit values into parameters. And I want you to create a parameter for each of those fit types. So let's fit, I'm gonna set that at 0.5 millimeters and I've already put in my transition fit, and I'm going to put my as 0.3 millimeters. There are two reasons that I want you to get in the habit of setting up your fit values as parameters before you start anything else in your model. Number one, by setting them up as parameters, you can reference them at multiple points inside of your various sketches and extrusions. And second, because they live in the parameter table, if for example, you were to go into a new printer or find out that those settings aren't quite working when you do your test print, it's very easy for you to update these values without having to go into each of those individual sketches where you reference those parameters. All right, now that our parameters are set, we can start modeling. So that you can follow along, I'm going to sh walk you through exactly how I created this particular cube. But if you'd like to go ahead and skip through that part and just learn about how to implement the fit, I'm gonna put the timestamp here. So for those that are following along with the model, here's what I've done. Number one, I created a simple square sketch in the top plane that is 75 millimeters by 75 millimeters. Then I extruded that up uh, 75 millimeters to create a cube. I created a sketch in the front plane, which is just a simple line running from one edge to the other edge. And then I used the split body command to split this body using that line as the splitting tool, all right? Which allowed me to create a lid and a base body. 
and I've actually changed the appearance on one so that they're very easy to distinguish. All right, the next thing that I did is I used the shell command to hollow out this body, and I used a seven millimeter wall thickness, which is pretty thick for 3D printing, but I think it's good for this particular example. Then I created a sketch using this top surface as the reference plane. And inside of that sketch, what I have done is I have used the project command to project these four edges, i.e. the top edges that will become the lip of my lid. And I extruded that down by 15 millimeters. So now we have a lid and a base. And then finally, I applied a 12 millimeter radius around all of the corners. All right, great. So at this point, we have a box with a base and a lid. And when we look at the cross section, we can see that they fit together perfectly inside of the CAD data. Now, in order to have them fit together when we 3D print them, we are going to have to introduce our fit value into our model depending on how we want these two parts to interact. For this example, I'm gonna use the transition fit that I've defined for my 3D printer of 0.4 millimeters. So, when we are designing our parts to fit together, there are essentially two methodologies for doing so. Hole basis fit and shaft basis fit. Hopefully this is pretty obvious, but just in case it isn't, the female component is the hole and the male component that fits inside of it is the shaft. So when we are talking about hole basis fit, the hole is going to follow the basic dimension and the fit deviation will be applied to the shaft, i.e. we will remove material from the shaft for a tolerance or clearance fit. In shaft basis fit, the shaft will follow the basic dimension and the fit deviation will be applied to the whole surface. The general default is to use whole basis fit, but you are welcome to explore both based off of your application. For this example, I'm gonna be using a whole basis approach, which means that the base will follow the basic dimensions that I've outlined in my CAD. And in order to achieve a transition fit, I will need to remove material from the edge of my lid. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and create a sketch on this top surface here. Next, I'm going to run a projection command to pull the four edges off of this lid. Hit okay. I'm gonna hide the lid just so you don't have to see them. And now I'm gonna do an offset command from these edges and apply my transition fit parameter. If you've never applied parameters before, it's very simple. All you have to do is type in the name and you can see it starts to pop up in the list. All right, I actually need to add a negative to the front of this value to make sure that it offsets to the inside and then hit okay. Great, and finish sketch. Next thing that I'm gonna do is I am going to actually extrude this profile that I've just created and I am going to remove this material from the lid. So I'm gonna change the operation type to cut. It is going to extend up to the object because I want it to up extend all the way up to this face and I'm going to hit okay. Great, now when we turn our base surface back on and we check our cross section, you can see that we now have a gap between these two surfaces that compensates for our intended fit. Now there are a lot of complexities to geometric fit and tolerancing that I'm not gonna go into in this video, but essentially what this value is known as is the fundamental deviation between these two surfaces. All right, so you may be noticing looking at this cross section that while we have accounted for the interface between these two part walls, we have not yet accounted for the interface between these two part walls. So let's do that now. I'm gonna turn off my cross section view and let's turn off our base surface and let's remove some material from the lid here in order to account for that fit deviation. So 
I'm going to come in here and I'm going to just do an extrude and select this surface here. I'm going to switch this operation to cut. And again, I'm going to use my transitional fit dimension here. Set that value to negative and hit OK. Great. Now when I jump back into my cross section view and look at my box, you can see that I've got a gap here as well in order to compensate for this interface. All right. One last thing that I want to do before I end this tutorial is I do actually want to create a bit of a lip at this interface just to ease the transition. So I'm actually going to come in here. I'm going to add a chamfer to this surface edge and it doesn't need to be super big. Yeah. Let's do two millimeters. And while that's not necessary, it is going to make it a little bit easier as we are sliding these parts in and out of each other to ensure that you have a nice engagement. All right, great. We are almost done. But before we end this tutorial, there's one concept that I want to circle back to, and that is our parameters. Let's say that you 3D print this cube and it's not quite fitting the way that you were hoping it would. Maybe the interaction is too loose. Maybe it's a little bit too tight. What I can do is I can go up to my change parameters table and I can actually change the value of this transition fit. Let's say that interface was in fact a little bit too loose and I need to tighten it up a little bit. So I can actually come in here and I can change this value to 0.35 millimeters, hit OK. And that is automatically going to update the distance between both here and here. So without having to go back and into this sketch or into this extrusion, in one step I can go back and modify the value of all of my transition fits inside of my model. That's not actually super easy to see, so let's make it uh, pretty drastic just so you can see it. Let's say I change this value up to 0.7. Uh, all right, so I want you to watch this edge and see what happens when I hit OK. You can see it's updating in real time, and you don't have to go back and remodel things. So again, going back to the first principles here, it's very important to get into the habit of setting up your fit values as parameters inside of Fusion 360 when you kick off your modeling process. All right, and that is the end of the tutorial. I definitely encourage you now to test these concepts out. Try printing out these parts using your interference, transition, and clearance values for your fit dimension and check out how it changes the feel between these parts in real life. Because once you have a solid understanding of the fit deviations required for your printer, it's really gonna help you create some unique and well-executed designs. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button. If you had any questions or topics that you'd like to see in future videos, please leave those in the comments. And if you'd like to stay up to date and continue learning with Practical Alchemy as I release new content, hit the subscribe button. With that, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. And don't forget to hit save.